and a very good day to you YouTube. I just want to do a quick uh, video this afternoon on the Nokia 800 TUF uh, purchased just the other day for about $179 uh, at JB Hi-Fi. So the rationale of purchasing an old brick in a new body I suppose um, was based on the premise that you know everything we do, everything we, we look at, everything we take a message from um, as we ultimately know is, is tracked and whilst I don't really have any issues with tracking uh, per se I, I wanted to cut down pretty well much my screen time on smartphones uh, and decided to go for what I'd call uh, not a dumb phone but a, a semi smartphone um, and the rationale being is that you know um, apart from being like a distraction we also spend way way too much time staring at screens when in fact all we really need to do is you know maybe socialize a bit more reach out and talk to our fellow human so taking that distraction away um, by restricting your access to you know social media news etc etc is probably not a bad way of actually changing who we are um, so I looked at a number of phones and what I wanted essentially was a phone that would give me a degree of toughness, uh, IP68, 67 uh, rating in terms of water resistance uh, and certainly dust, uh, and a fair degree of you know shock, something that's going to absorb the shock. Um, so look, my current driver is an old, when I say old, a 2020 Samsung uh, Note Ultra. Uh, and look, it's a, it's a great phone. It, it does everything, it's double seamed. Um, you know, it, it's 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 a great size. It's got full access to everything else uh, that you could possibly want in a smartphone. Um, and, but the thing is, the more it's there, the more you tend to just look at it. And it's, it's human nature these days. I mean, I guess the difference being, you know, generation whatever we are today, as opposed to someone that was born in the '60s, um, we just didn't have those distractions. Uh, you know, I'm a '69 child. And really didn't start to use a mobile phone until well and truly into my mid to late 20s. So, you know, the whole concept of a mobile phone or cell phone or whatever you want to call it um, really came leaps and bounds, probably, as we know, um, starting from these old Nokias, but then venturing into what I, iPhone and Apple sort of changed the whole industry uh, and today into the Android markets. Um, so, you know, a tiny bit more background, if I may, looking uh, at a phone, like I said, I've got the, uh, I've got the Nokia, uh, correction, I've got the Samsung uh, Galaxy Note Ultra, which I just absolutely love. Um, and I thought, well, it's a 4G phone, everything's going 5G, let's get into a 5G phone. Now, I've got like, I, I've got an iPad, uh, I've got an iMac, um, and I've always been an Apple type person. So I thought, in the last... How long's it been? Probably the last mm, six years, maybe five years, I've been wholly and solely sort of in the phone market with Android and, and totally enjoyed it. Found it a little bit hard to get used to from an Apple phone. Prior to that, I owned Apples, you know, from uh, like an iPhone 4 up to, a, I think, about a 7 um, and, and really enjoyed um, the whole sort of architecture and, so, and really bought into the Apple, um, you know, the Apple market. But my switch to uh, my, my switch to Andrew Android even was necessitated by the fact that I'd moved overseas and Apple products were just way way too expensive. So Android was the uh, was the good delineation between excess price uh, and certainly great functionality. Um, so going back to where I was, five G, four G. Um, the Note's a a four G phone, um, and whilst that's you know absolutely totally acceptable. Um, you know, in Australia and imagined all throughout the world. Uh, but, you know, they, they keep talking about one day 4G will be turned off. So let's future-proof. So, you know, the iPhone, the iPhone 13, um, you know, is a great, a great phone, no doubt. And they've just recently uh, released the, the green colour, um, to which I really, really like. So um, my, my purchase was almost going to be an iPhone 13 Pro Max or whatever they call them. Um, but locking yourself into an, you know, a $1,700, 1800 phone over a three-year sort of period on a plan would just seemed really, really dumb. I mean, what are we paying for? 
we're paying for technology and Apple I, I must admit Apple is good in terms of you know after you know after sort of series support anything up to sort of maybe five six years I'm, I'm led to believe um, and so therefore I saw the 13 as being a viable option that's going to last me you know substantially into the 2020s but once again it came down to price why should I go out and put myself into you know essentially two thousand dollar plus uh, debt and there are some out there that could afford it, you know, straight out with cash. But unfortunately, I'm not that person. Um, so going from an iPhone 13, I thought, well, <clears throat> my whole purpose was to really reduce my digital footprint. Um, and so I thought, well, what about something tried and true uh, and certainly something that uh, it's withstood the test of time? So uh, the other day, as mentioned, I... I basically came across a YouTube, um, you know, sort of uh, video on the TUF, the uh, Nokia 800 TUF, and I thought, well, let's check that out. Uh, and after a bit of research and so forth, I went straight down to the local JB and picked it up. So this phone, um, going into it essentially, just to give you an idea, is, uh, and I really like this colour. This is the sand colour. Uh, I'm getting a few zebras here, so I must be doing something not so cool. Um, but anyway, it sort of, it has that sort of nice uh, finish there, which I I kind of like. Um, and it is a ruggedized piece of monstrosity. When I say monstrosity, um, you know, certainly for its size, it's bulked up with a lot of good protection, which was a big, a big selling point. Um, apparently it also comes in a black, but I, uh, and only had access really to the sand and I'm quite happy with it. Look, it's the, the display isn't anything fantastic. It's a 2.4 inch, um, you know, and essentially uh, that screen, I guess, mindful too that, you know, it could get scratched. I think maybe some sort of plastic, you know, sort of, I don't know, screen protector or something put over the top would be a, a semi-wise investment. Um, camera wise, look, it's nothing like my, what is it, 108 megapixel Samsung or whatever it might be. Um, but, it, you know, it's a two megapixel uh, rear camera. There is no front camera. Um, so any sort of ideas of trying to do Skype calls or even if you could do it, FaceTime. You can't do a FaceTime because it's not a, um, you know, it's certainly not a, a, an Apple phone. Uh, it, you just can't do. So you, you've got that little two megapixel camera at the back, um, which, as you can see, uh, is a single lens. What I do like about it is even the camera mount, um, I'll try and get this straight, even that camera mount is, it's got some sort of aluminium plate on it which gives it extra robustness uh, and protection. So I think that's a, that's a, good, a good sign uh, in terms of a, a particular, particular uh, camera that is going to take a bit of a flogging. Um, so yeah, so that's the two megapixel camera. It's not earth shattering and it's probably I don't know, 1997, 2002, I don't know, but it's uh, it's there and that's what it is. Um, they talk about the battery life on this thing and, and I think that's that's a huge seller to me because, um, you know, you can have anything up to 43 days um, using a, uh, on standby that is, using a, sim, a single SIM 3G. Uh, and I think, look, 3G is probably near the end of its life life cycle. So that reduces down on a single SIM on a standby uh, to 34 days. So if you didn't touch it, you charged it, fully charged it, uh, and didn't use it, it would sit in a state of charge for 34 days, which is just unbelievable. Um, the good thing about the phone as well uh, is that it's a dual SIM. So you can have Telstra in one slot and you can certainly have Optus, you can have Belong, you can have Boost, you can have whatever uh, in the second. So that gives you that opportunity. Uh, to my understanding of this particular model that it's a dual SIM, um, but if you didn't want two SIM cards, um, obviously you could put in a, uh, you could put in an SD card, which is, you know, incredible. I, I know with my, uh, my, big, my big monster, you know, flagship phone, and I'll bring it across for a second, probably too big to fit in the thing uh, you know this this is a dual simmer uh, as in the note 20 it's a top of the range it's got a stylus uh, and it is a big mofo there's no doubt about it I mean if you look if you look at the comparison I mean obviously it, they're two very different phones but 
it's a monster, you know, and um, and when you look at basically a 2.4 inch as opposed to a, I don't know, a 6.7 or whatever it might be, um, the real estate on it is, is something something else. So, you know, if you look, and I'm, I'm no spring chicken, um, I'm, you know, I'm in my 50s and my eyesight isn't that fantastic. But, you know, looking and trying to read news on either phone well, of course, I'm going to choose the Samsung. I mean, I just, I just really love that sort of that, that screen. But going back to what I was talking about before, it's it's all the distractions are built with it. Will I give up entirely on the on the Samsung? Likely no. I mean, I, I, highly probable that I won't. But I will restrict my usage by having a phone such as the um, excuse me, but the Nokia that allow me to um, just take calls. Um, and, and text. I mean, essentially, that's it. So, no, you're not dead, Samsung, uh, and there'll certainly be a, a, a you know a spot and a point for you in my life, but you'll be less used, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, so that that thirty whatever you want to call it, thirty four days uh, standby on this little fella is, is quite amazing. So you know you could go. Hiking, you could go, you know, anything outdoor is. Uh, look, I ride a motorcycle too, so you know, you could go motorcycle camping, whatever it might be. Um, and if you didn't have access to electricity, power banks, whatever, um, this thing would last a considerable amount of time. Um, so, Bluetooth wise, look, it's only uh, 4.1, it's not top of the range sort of Bluetooth, but it will Bluetooth to, uh, you know, all sorts of things, headphones, etc. Um, it comes with some connectivity features built into the phone um, and I'll just uh, I'll take that off so you can't see my passcode I'll put you there um, so it does come with some connectivities looking at the um, and I'll put this down here looking at the the home screen if you like um, so and I don't know how good that's going to come up but you know on the uh, on the digital side if you like on the uh, you know app side of things it's 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 supported to a certain extent, um, but you do have Go, uh, Google uh, Assistant, you've got YouTube, you've got Maps, you've got Facebook, you've got WhatsApp, Look, and I, and I love WhatsApp, so you know if I wanted to use it, um, WhatsApp would be something I would definitely sort of use each day in, day out. But once again, I'm trying to get away from, you know, those distractions, uh, the tracking, whatever you want to call it. You've got a Google uh, Chrome type search engine there, um, you've got, as you can see there, Twitter as well. Um, so, and it has its own app store as well. I think um, it's, uh, you know, it's not it's not a Google. Um, I think it's KO or, yeah, Chaos. Chaos uh, is the operating system. So, you know, it's got a, it's got a small ever building, I guess, um, how would you put it? Ever building sort of um, app store. And there are apps you can download, um, but, you know, uh, that's not what I bought it for. Um, so battery life, uh, look, it's 2100 um, amp hours, which is nothing. You know, it's not that great. Uh, and if you were to use it, I guess, non-stop, um, you'd probably get about 12 hours, I guess, you know, out of stand, out of, out of constant calls, etc., etc. Uh, it's got GPS. Uh, and what I do like about it up the top here, buried under this flap, which is going to be difficult to do. Uh, there we go. Uh, it's got a, I don't know if you can see that. There we go. It's got a 3.5 millimeter jack, which is a thing of yesteryear, basically, build of phones. Um, that Samsung, that 20, I had a, uh, what did I have before it? The one, the model before it, the 9 or the 10 or whatever it was. Uh, and that had a 3.5, which was just awesome. You could plug a cable in and uh, listen to your headphones. The good thing about that 3.5 jack there is that allows, uh, well, obviously a headphone to be plugged in, but it also goes to a ra FM radio, um, which is in here somewhere. So you could dial into your favorite FM radio station, providing you got a headphone jack in, um, the headphone plugged into the, the headphone jack, which provides the antenna. You can listen to Triple M, whatever you want. Um, we spoke about the micro USB. Um, you know, that, that's awesome. You can expand it. Um, considering that it's only like two gigs or something, uh, built-in storage. So having that micro USB provides so many different options, uh, you know, to, for storage and so forth. 
Um, so it'll do LTE, um, which is great. So and also voice over LTE as well, which is the reason why you can pick up on your, you know, certain applications. Um, I know, I know with WhatsApp that unfortunately when it comes to voice, you can't do uh, nor video. Obviously, it can't do video because it doesn't have a camera at the front. But um, you know, you can only do text. But apparently, it's got voice over LTE, which is um, you know something okay. Um, you know, it's it's weight. It's, it's not that heavy, but it is quite a solid phone. Um, and so, therefore, you know, if you weren't if you had a similar sort of model, um, it'd be a lot less than 161 grams. But really, what is 161 grams in the bigger scheme of things? Not so much. Um, <clears throat> so that's the that's the crux of the reasons why I bought it. Um, and as we spoke about, there are things. There's a you know a unit converter. There's a recorder. There's a calculator. Uh, you've got a file manager. You've got a calendar. You've got a note. You've got essentially a settings. FM radio is what we spoke about before. Music. Uh, I don't know if you had an SD card in there. I suppose that's where you'd you'd throw your music and play it from. Um, that's the uh, the email. So that email, I guess you could set it up. I haven't set up any of this. Welcome to press next for your setup. So I guess you could throw in there, you know, your, your Google or your Hotmail or whatever you got. Uh, there's a clock. That a clock's, clock's pretty well much just a, a basic thing with an alarm, a timer and a stopwatch. So there's enough there to keep you interested and, keep, and, and the necessities that you need to get by. And that's, that's the real big selling point of this phone, to, in my humble opinion, is that it's got everything in it you could possibly need to keep you at least comfortably happy uh, and amused. If for a fact you couldn't afford a, you know, a seventeen, well, $1,700 iPhone or a, you know, a $1,200 Samsung or a reconditioned phone or whatever, for $179, <clears throat> I think you get a lot of phone. I really do. Um, and look, like I said, um, IP68, you can take it outside. If it's caught in the rain, it's not going to affect it. Uh, apparently, it's, um, you know, sort of shock up to 1.7 metre drops. Um, you know, it, it can withstand temperature variation. Uh, and it really is just a robust, robust phone. Um, we spoke about Google. There's messages, bog messages. Um, that camera also contains... Uh, video recording as well, so you can do video recording. I should keep this central, shouldn't I? Um, and a gallery where you can view your pictures and a video sort of system, if you like. Um, it comes with the old snake game as well. Uh, I haven't flashed, well, actually, I think I flashed it up the other night. Um, so, yeah, that, look, that was always a, a classic, classic old sort of Nokia game. They've actually, um, they've actually tarted it up a little bit now, so... Um, it really, uh, press five to continue. It's a little bit different to what it used to be. I'm trying to do this. Um, there we go. So that's, it kind of goes not so much in a straight line anymore. Well, I'm not very good at this. Um, it it kind of goes anywhere you want it to go if you know how to drive it, which I clearly don't. But it's there. Look, it's there. And um, if you wanted to play it, I don't want to go to Google. I'll just get out a snake. Um, if you wanted to play Snake, uh, it's there, which is fantastic. You've also got uh, some other games as well. If I go back, there's uh, Danger Dash. These are built-in games. Um, Real Football and uh, Siberian Strike. Now, I've not played those, so I don't know what they are. I'm not much of a phone gamer. Um, so I think, it's a, I think it's a good little buy for $179. And uh, look, I've made a couple of calls on it already and received calls. Um, the call quality, um, you know, obviously that's as good as the ISP um, or the telco. Um, it was loud, it was clear, uh, it was distortion free, and I thought, you know, it was it was actually quite quite a good phone to take calls on. Um, it's the old school text, predictive text. Um, these buttons, by the way, are rubberized, so um, that's great. So there's a fair bit of tactile um, feel about them, which is awesome. Um, you can set up, you've, you've got notices here, so if you had notices, they'd come up. Um, you could set this shortcut key. I've got it set up to um, settings, but you can change that the camera. That's pretty well much that second button <coughs> on the uh, on the below the top left. Um, you've got a call 
connect, you've got a call, um, and this is also actually a third button on the right hand side down uh, is essentially your wake up key. Um, and uh, so if we go back, you know, if you wanted to, to lock your phone or whatever, you just use that third button there um, on the right hand side, uh, and then you can clean up uh, your memory. You can restart, power off, or lock your phone. So that's how you do that, turning it on and off. And then you've got your standard, um, you know, one through to zero. Um, and like I said, these keys are rubberized, they're tactile, tactile. So if you did have gloves on or whatever, you could you could actually feel around, uh, you know, where you would need it to be. Um, it, it is, it is uh, frustrating to text, but that's just old school and... Just before the, you know, before we had these smartphones, well, that's what we use these predictive bloody things where you needed to push, you know, two, sometimes three times to get to see, uh, you know. So if you wanted to go cats, you know, two, two, sort of eight, uh, but the predictive nature would it works it out for you. So um, overall, quite a good phone, I, I think, and it's only new days, it's only fresh days, but it's something that um, I think I'll use more of. Um, and like I said, with the Samsung, essentially, I'll carry it, um, you know, for example, if I'm out and I need access to, for example, KO to watch the NRL or whatever the case might be, um, you know, that phone will still be there, you know, listening to, you know, apps, radio and television and things like that. Things that you can't do on this, clearly you can do on that. The good thing about it is you can hotspot, you know, this, uh, this phone. So, yeah, this phone here is 4G. This phone here is 4G. So, if you hot spotted onto the Samsung, well, technically, you could still watch your KA, you could still watch your 9, you could still watch your whatever you want, your Netflix, I guess, um, which then negates having a SIM card in this one. You know, you can carry that phone around um, and use it for a media source. Um, without the reliance is said essentially on just being on it and uh, and just take your calls and your text through here so um that's that's the new phone and I, i'm i'm happy so far what i've done is i've put a little carabiner um so i've used like a key key ring sort of um loop and i've just run it through the little the little hold a bit here uh, and then I can I can use that then to uh, you know put a carabiner on and you know attach it to my pants, put some keys on it, attach it to a lanyard, blah blah lanyard, blah blah blah. Um, which brings me on to the second part of the video. I really do love, uh, and I don't I don't have it in front of me, but uh, essentially this is an otter case. Um, and uh, look, it's an awesome case. This phone's IP68 as well. Um, so you put it into an otter case and technically in some respects and decent screen protector um, and just on the screen protector just jumping around a little bit uh white stone dome a korean company uh screen protector look i paid 50 dollars for a tempered glass one uh in a you know in a phone shop uh the slightest the slightest little uh rub up against it and essentially it uh it cracked and so Luckily, the shop was good enough. They've got a uh, like a two-week sort of exchange program. If something happens to the screen, so I was able to take it back and get it get it replaced. Um, you know, under that fourteen days, and it took like literally the next day, and there was a crack in this tempered glass. So, you know, prior to the tempered glass, I, I had this plastic um, wrap on it, and it was absolutely sensational. The only thing is, taking this phone in and out of cases. The, the wrap over a period of time, and I'm talking, it's 2022, I bought this in 2020, two years, but there was not a scratch on it. Like the phone had been, <coughs> you know, inadvertently scratched with keys or whatever. There was no scratches on the actual um, on the actual screen protector, this plastic, plastic sort of screen protector. Um, but it was starting to peel up and it was becoming unsightly. So I went and changed it for a tempered glass. And like I said, had two scratches and two cracks on it, you know, within two weeks. And I went, this is crap. So shopping around, <coughs> uh, did some research on good old YouTube and essentially came up with Whitestone Dome. I think it's called Whitestone Dome, Korean company. Look, it's it's $90, um, the, the phone shop uh, installed it, but the actual application within the box itself 
is apparently straightforward, but for the same price, I've got a professional phone shop to install it, and I cannot speak any more highly on this particular white stone dome, I think it's called. So um, that uh, is the screen protector now with the Otter Box. Um, and with that in mind, the Otter Box comes with this, as we all know, this little kickstand slant holster. And this was a big, big selling point for me because I wanted something that I could clip on. Uh, the beauty about it is too, you can do these ones and it becomes like a little holder. And I think we all know that if we watch enough of this YouTube stuff. So the point of the matter is, that was great for the, uh, for the Otter Box and it was perfect, uh, what, perfectly what I wanted for the Samsung. But what about this? I thought, well, shh, how am I supposed to live without a holster? So uh, essentially, once again, good old YouTube and a bit of Googling on the, on the Samsung, not on the, not on the Nokia. Um, I went down to the local Bunnings today uh, and I bought a tough built, um, tough built sort of uh, protector or uh, phone holster, I should say. Now, if you don't know Tough Built, they're a smartphone holster. Um, if you don't know Tough Built, they, they make a lot of, you know, uh, tool sort of accessories, pouches, you know, holsters and things like that for pliers and larger pieces of tool. But they also do uh, what is essentially a, uh, a phone holder. Um, so the smartphone pouch comes with a notebook and pencil, and we'll have a look at that in a second. But uh, it features basically uh, a steel clasp. Now that was what I really needed, which attaches to any belt. Uh, and that sort of looks, I'll get that one out of the way. That looks a little bit like that. So that will then, you know, sit onto the side of my pants, onto my belt, and allow me to uh, have the phone inside the, the holster and, uh, and to carry it around as required. Um, it says here it fits most cell phones. This, uh, this is a Samsung Note. 20 Ultra as spoken about. Uh, it's in that Otter box as we've spoken about before. It struggles to fit inside of this uh, tough build. Now, it is possible that if I took off that Otter case, the phone may, you know, squeeze in quite quite uh, uh, snugly, if that's a word, um, into this. But uh, that's not what I bought this for. I bought this to put that in so I could have that that holster, that little clip. Um, so when it says fits most cell phones, yeah, I suppose if you had your normal size iPhones and, you know, your S series that aren't sort of pluses or mega phones, it'd fit in. Um, so essentially, it's got a soft, a soft scratch proof lining uh, and it's plastic walled construction, protects your cell phone. So mindful of this being a 30 minute limited camera we'll just open it up quickly um, and you'll see that it does come with this little tough book uh, you know notepad which is pretty cool that's always good to have a notepad on hand uh, when you don't have a smartphone with a stylus it comes with a carpenter's pencil which I'll need to sharpen it's got um, you know it's got sort of like a little ruler on there as well which is fantastic but in saying that you know you can put any old any old pen in there as well. So you probably wouldn't walk around with a carpenter's pen, but you could easily walk around. I'll just put that there for a second. You could quite easily walk around, it's a bad example, um, oh, damn. with a normal pen. Uh, and of course it would look better if you tucked it in. Uh, and then your notepad there, I'll take the pen out because it's a little bit distracting and moving across to the phone which is where I'm really trying to go to the phone would fit in there as you can see that Nokia fits just nicely it absolutely is a great fit for it um, and with that little carabiner the beauty about that is when you close this lid over uh, you could attach that to the side of your your pants and then you could put that carabiner for example um, you know for example on your eyelet for your, your pants so overall, I think that's a great solution. I really do. Um, uh, it's a great phone in terms of what it was built for, in terms of toughness and, uh, and certainly durability, keeping the minimization of distractions and just having the necessities of what you need, i.e. someone, if someone calls, they can reach you and someone texts you, they can SMS you. Uh, and then being able to protect it all in a casing with a holster 
Um, and you know, like that extra carabiner, well it comes with a carabiner, so if you didn't have a carabiner on your phone like I have, you've got a carabiner there to uh, keep anything in there, your keys, etc, etc. So that really is the wrap up of the, uh, of the Tough Built uh, smartphone pouch um, and the Nokia 800 Tough 4G phone. Um, I've rambled on enough now. And uh, clearly, I'm not going to get too many followers because, well, I don't know how useful that video was. But if you found it useful, um, you know, maybe drop something in the uh, the comment section. And um, and good luck with your phone journey, whatever that might be. Because uh, at the end of the day, uh, there is a great deal of tracking. There is somewhat tracking on this, but if you choose not to use those applications, then the temptation isn't there. Some could say the same for that one. But you're more inclined on a big smartphone to do all that sort of good stuff of, you know, getting on Facebook, getting on, you know, Google searches and et cetera, et cetera. Um, whilst there's nothing really to be too concerned about, it really is just something that I find intrusive. That little bad boy there, um, will keep me hopefully happy for the foreseeable future. So uh, thanks for your time. Hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it helps. Um, please drop anything you'd like in the comment section below. You don't have to subscribe. You don't have to uh, like. You know, it's entirely up to you. Okay, on that note, bye-bye.